Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, I wanted to share with you a new add-on script that I've been working on. So you might be familiar with ambientcg.com. Now this site is a great asset for materials and assets and HDRIs and things like that. And I use their materials quite a bit, but one of the things that you need to do is um, download them, extract them, and the process can be kind of time consuming especially if you've downloaded several materials and you need to bring them all into Blender uh, quick. So what I've done is created a little extension that speeds that process up a little bit and gets you to a point where you can use the material that you've downloaded very, very quickly, but then also gives you the flexibility to alter it later. Let me show you what I mean. What we're gonna wanna do is go to the PBR surfaces uh, section here. And this gives us a listing of assets that are available. So let's say we uh, pick a couple here that we like. So these bricks look nice and I will download uh, whichever resolution version that I want. And what you're gonna want is the one here that says it's USDZ compatible. So I'm gonna grab this 4K JPEG version. I'll go back. I like this wood floor here, so I'll download this one. Here I'll get the 2K version, and maybe this rusty metal. Now, if you go to my personal extension library and you look for the ACG material importer, and to install that, all you need to do is either uh, add my repository URL into your Blender settings and install it through Blender, or you can just click and drag this download link and drop it onto Blender, and it will ask you if you want to install it. Once you have that installed, it's pretty simple to use. All you do is go to your file import menu, and you'll have this ambient CG USD material zip. So you're not going to want to unzip these files that you've downloaded the extension will do that for you. So here I am in my download folder. I've got a bunch of zip files that I've downloaded from Ambient CG. So let's pick this first one that I downloaded and I'll hit import material. This is going to create a new UV sphere to apply the material to. So if I go into rendered mode, you'll see that I've got my material applied here. Now, if I go over to the shading tab, you'll see what we end up with is the USDC import of that material. Generally speaking, the materials from ambientcg.com are set up like this, where they've got a, a UV map. And now by default, the name of the UV map is, uh, set, to some, is set to something else. So uh, the extension goes ahead and renames that to UV map, which is kind of the default name of the UV maps in Blender. Of course, you can change this to whatever you need it to be. The USDC import has the color image going into the base color, the roughness going into the roughness here, and the GL normal going into a normal map here and going to the output. But there are other files that come with these ambient CG downloads occasionally. Like here you see this one had an ambient occlusion JPEG, a displacement JPEG, and then a DX normal map. So what I've had the extension do is any of the images that aren't already being used, it also imports those as separate nodes. That way they get stored with the material. And so then if you want to go back and add them to your material later, they're already connected and packed into your blend file. That way you don't have to main, that way you don't necessarily have to keep that zip file from ambient CG. Everything that was in there will be packed into your blend file. So here, if I wanted to take my ambient occlusion and maybe do a mix color with that and I'll do a multiply We get some extra shading there. 
I could also put in RGB curves here and then use that to accentuate the ambient occlusion. And then if I wanted to take the displacement, plug in the vector, put this into a displacement node, plug that in here. If I'm in Blender 4.5, I would need to go and turn on experimental. Add a subdivision surface node. And then I could come in and start tweaking my displacement. Now in Blender 5.0, you won't have to turn on experimental mode because the features for adaptive subdivision and displacement mapping have been uh, taken out of experimental mode in Blender 5.0, and you can just enable these things uh, straight in cycles without too much trouble. Now, the other thing you will notice here is that immediately when this is imported, if I go back over here and open up the asset browser, you'll see that this has marked this as an asset. And if I open up the side panel, you'll have the name here you'll see that the license is Creative Commons CC0. So Ambient CG does allow you to use these in whatever way you want. And then of course, uh, we give attribution to ambientcg.com for the creation of this material. So I hope that gives you a streamlined way to bring in new materials. In an upcoming version of this, I will probably have it so that you can select multiple at the same time. And so if you've downloaded four or five materials, you could import them all with a single selection and import. So I've got to see what some of the logistics are to make that work and make that efficient, but uh, hopefully that will be coming soon. Anyhow, go grab this script. It's free. Uh, you're more than welcome to use it. Uh, it's out on my GitHub so that if you really want to ha hack it and add other features for yourself, automatically connect things in, alter the materials in some way, that's completely up to you and you can do with that what you will. I hope you find this useful. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.